The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Preparations depend on quite a few things. They are subject to the type issue you'll face. Everybody's not going to face the same issue. So for each person, preparations are going to be different. There have been so many people already who made preparations, only to lose hundreds of millions of dollars. For example, with all the rain that we had, all the way up until this point, rich neighborhoods who got together to build these underground communities, they have been flooded out, which means those people lost millions of dollars. They lost their food. They lost all the backup capability is gone. Still other folks were stockpiling things to their homes. Their homes are no more. Now, something has been happening. I've been watching because I tend to look at everything through God's instructions. For example, do you know, the Father has told us things about preparations. It's unfortunate that many people will not hear it. Listen to themselves, but they won't hear it. What the Lord is saying. So I ask you this, what would you rather have? To prepare by your own means, or to prepare for what you think may happen, or to prepare by way of truth, which means to prepare with what God has laid upon your hearts. Which one is better? Wouldn't that be what the Lord has laid upon your heart and not do your own thing? And let me give you an example. There are a lot of people right now in certain areas. I'm not going to name the areas. You can check yourself by way of uh, getting nosy with Northcom. But there are a lot of people right now who have built their home into a fortress. I hate to tell them, but they're not going to be able to stay in those homes if something were to take place. They're going to have forced evacuations. And when they do these evacuations, they're not going to play because time will be of the essence. And it, again, it depends on the nature of the incident. Also, because the Lord said that the world would not know that, that they would be caught off guard. The Bible is conveying to us that those in the world will not be prepared no matter what they prepare for. And it's, and it's, it's, it's so obvious what's happening because something is taking place right now. A lot of people prior to 2018 has spent trillions of dollars on underground bunkers and, and, you know, fortifying things in their homes. Do you not know that with all this rain, the majority of those places have been totally damaged? They've been wiped away to the point where they can't even, they, they can't even get the structures back. Folks who have had their uh, underground they, in their basements, right below their basements, or attached to their homes, underground facilities to take their children into, they've been flooded out because we have had way too much water. Their supplies have been destroyed. Mildew has eaten up a lot of people's supplies. So now what am I saying? You've, it, it is smart for a person to prepare based upon what the Lord lays upon them. You don't know where you're going to be in the next 30 days, the Father does. So if the Lord laid upon your heart to gather some sticks, how many people would do it? I'm going to show you something. If the Lord told you to grab some dry sticks and to start bagging them up, how many would go and do that? I'm one that would. I would because I never questioned the Father. So let me, let me give you a scenario, it's something that will happen in a lot of areas. So one afternoon, something takes place. You hear a siren that you've never heard before, never. You begin to hear aircraft activity. All of a sudden, you get a knock at your door. They tell you that within one hour, you've got to get on a transport. And the only thing you can take with you are the clothes on your back and identification papers. No food, no supplies, no nothing. That all of them would be afforded to you. And then you have some people who are going to say, no, I'm not going to do it. So their family gets split up. Because at that point, they won't look at families. They'll try to keep families together. But depending on the nature of the problem, you could be somebody who would spread something further. You could be part of the enemy in which we're fighting. You could cause other people to lose their lives. You may become a liability. So you would have to go by what their troops are being trained to do this. They have been authorized to use deadly force. Again, the Bible says the world is not going to be prepared. So what about us, the saints? We're not to be caught off guard. Now, a lot of people, when you talk like this about preparations, they forget about what will happen. Look at the hurricanes. How many people in Katrina were prepared to survive for days after Katrina? There were some. They did have water on site. So how miserable was it? It was very miserable. In fact, some people stated that it got so bad they wished they would have died in the hurricane. So you have to consider something. If something very, de if a nuclear bomb went off in America, do you not know I'd like to be at ground zero? 
Do you understand that? I'm not going to try and save my life for what reason? To live in a world that is half alive? Most people have not seen it that way. The only, the closest to an apocalyptic event people, most people have in their minds is what's been shown in the movies. And that's called, what they're doing is showing everybody a managed crisis. It's not the way it's, it's not what's going to happen. However, if you've ever been in the chaos of a country falling, then you understand it is not a managed chaos. It is a chaos beyond description. And people, they will double your troubles. But I can tell you right now, in, in, in case of an event like that, here's a question today. Are you prepared to do what the Lord has instructed you to do today? So if the Lord laid upon your heart to gather medical supplies, did you do it? Because if you're doing something the Lord didn't instruct you to do, it's going to fail. For those of you who cannot prepare, why would you get nurse? That's useless. If a person truly belongs to the Father, and in disaster, do you not know somebody else has made provisions for you? You'll find you may end up in a place where someone is going to provide to you. Because that's part of what the Lord said he would do. And have you ever looked at the character of the individuals who actually suffer through these uh, storms and things of that nature? See, those who believe in the Lord, all of a sudden, they were given supplies. They didn't ask for them. They were given supplies. Those who were hatred, violent, and they didn't care anything about the Lord, they were the ones that suffered the most. We're going to face that on a large scale. God has made preparations for his people already. It doesn't matter how loud something gets. It doesn't matter how, you know, if something gets a bit too cold or a bit too hot. It doesn't matter. The Lord is looking after his children. That's something you don't have to worry about. What we are charged to do is obey the Lord with what he gave us. He gave us something to do. Because I can tell you, if you read the Bible, you're going to find those who survive the worst of the worst. See, a saint may not survive the worst of the worst. For some reason, it's almost like uh, to make a sacrilegious comment to tell you that Christians will die. But that's what you read in Revelation. Who is that great number that no man can number? These are they who came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. They didn't make it, but they came out of great tribulation. They did not make it. They're not living on an earth that is in misery. They died. I can assure you also, if a chemical weapon went off in the U.S., you wouldn't want to survive, and you cannot utilize your food. If certain chemical weapons or biological agents are used, plastic will not protect your food. Lead will not protect your food. To have it encased, uh, like most people encased, will not protect your food. With some of the sonic weapons we have, nothing will protect your food. With some of the sonic weapons, you can point it at a banana and cause it to be rotten, biodegrade in less than one minute. It'll be a rotten piece of food. Of course, it won't be exposed to the elements like insects, but it's rotten and it stinks. Given the nature of some of the weapons that we do have, you'll have all your supplies, but you can't drag all those supplies with you. For example, I'm just giving you some sober scenarios. Suppose you live in the Ozarks. You say, well, nothing's going to happen here. Then all of a sudden we have a quake. All those old mountain ranges sink into the earth, 112, or, or let's just say they sink to sea level or underwater. Everything fortified in those mountains and those rocks will fall with the rocks. Water takes everything else over. What happened to your preparations? Well, let's suppose you live in New Mexico. You prepare for the worst, but then one morning you wake up and water is five and a half feet up to your neck. Then what? In the middle of the U.S., water's up five and a half feet. Then what are you going to do? All your stuff is going to be ruined. What do you do then? You can't drag a bunch, uh, uh, you know, 100 pounds of supplies with you or anything like that. Now, suppose you live in an area that is not affected by any of it, but you hear of the danger all around you and you have your supplies. You're going to do okay for a while, but then somebody's going to find you because you probably did not hide your house. You see what I'm saying? So all these scenarios, what am I communicating to you? It is impossible for us to prepare for a scenario when we don't know what the scenario is. But the Lord has put on your hearts to do something. So I suggest this. Do what the Lord has laid upon your heart, but don't try to predict what's going to happen. Don't do that. Because that's when people end up messing up. Like in Dorian, a lot of people had to swim for it. Do you know that? The weather was too violent. It was too violent. They couldn't stay in one place. Katrina, same thing happened. A lot of those people had to swim for it. They didn't count on being displaced like that. But however, if you're in the mountains and something happens, you better have a go bag. 
Why would you have a go bag? Because everything in your refrigerator is going to go bad. Especially if it happens during the summer months, you're going to have a bunch of rotten food in your refrigerator. And the only thing you're going to have left are, are those dried foods and perishables and waters because you get the, the water in, in, in the mountains, you cannot trust that water. So you have to have your own water. So in that perspective, something happened. If you had supplies stashed somewhere or in a bag, you'd be doing great. Well, you wouldn't be doing great. But you're going to last, what, six, seven, eight days longer than everybody else. But my point is this. It doesn't matter what any of us prepare. When it comes to food and water, some people don't think soberly. So let me give you this scenario. Suppose something did happen and all of us in COT were prepared. We have what's called a bug out bag. So we have the bug out bag, which, what does it really do? It ensures that we'll have supplies for a few more days. They're gonna run out though. Do you understand they're gonna run out? Those supplies are going to run out. So what did you really do? What are you really doing? If you have a bag, if you don't have a bag, then, or versus you do have a bag, you're gonna last a, a few days longer than the other people. So what is the proper way to do then? If the Lord laid it upon your heart and he has for certain people to have supplies ready to go, that normally means you're going to have to move. If he laid that on your heart to do that, you've got to do that. In my case, it's medical supplies. I, I, I thought I saw somebody else mention in the chat room medical supplies. The Lord laid it upon my heart to have medical supplies. The last time he did this, something happened and every single bit of those medical supplies were needed. But the Lord already has a way to prepare. And I can almost guarantee you that the Lord has laid his instructions upon your heart. We just don't listen to him all the time, do we? See, here's the deal, folks. Here's a principle. I'm going to give you this principle. If you have something that you can live by, you're going to be charged with using that to live by. Those of you who absolutely have nothing, somebody else will sustain you. That's the way the Lord works. Some people don't have any, they don't have anything right now, but they're being sustained how? See, what's happening today is going to happen during a disaster. The Lord sustains you right now. Somehow, your life is working out. How is it working out? You don't know quite how, but it's working out. It's going to be the same thing if something happens. We can never forget that our Father is supernatural. We can never forget that our Father is spirit. We can never forget that he can have you tap a rock and water's going to come out of it. We can never forget he can drop food out of the sky. See, that sounds impossible to us in this generation. Do you know what's happened before in previous, in, in previous uh, times in people's lives? They ended up in somebody's house. That whoever's house they ended up in was stuck to the teeth full of supplies. And those people who ended up at those places were normally children. It's so funny because when kids and school buses get trapped in certain disasters or kids in homes, they always end up getting moved around. And then they gather in somebody's home they don't even belong to. Yet that person whose home they gather in has food for the kids. Isn't that funny? That's how the Father works. If you go and do dig, 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 dig and do your homework, you're going to find that a lot of people left their homes, but some people had to go take, go into another person's home just to take shelter. And it just so happened when they went into the other person's home, they had food there. Because somebody got the call to start stocking food. What the person didn't know is they were stocking it for a future event. See how that works? Right now, if something were to happen, and some of you who cannot afford to do anything, if the Lord desires that you live through a specific time, he has made preparations for you already. The person who will go out and buy the supplies, God has blessed them with a job so they can buy supplies and the home to put it in. When a disaster strikes, if you're going to be one of those to occupy that place, God has tailored it to you already. This has happened to so many people, even people on medication. There was a per there were a few occasions where people had uh, had to go to a home, but that home just so happened to have the medications they needed. We're not talking about pain pills. We're talking about things like high blood pressure medication, sugar, uh, insulin shots, things of that nature. That they it just so happens they entered into a home that was stocked full of supplies of these things. See, that's the father taking care of us. Not to mention. Because our Father is supernatural, you don't have to become hungry. You don't have to become thirsty. God can supernaturally supply you where you don't even feel thirst or hunger. If necessary, for the rest of your days, you're on this earth. See, what we, what, what we have to do is trust in what the Lord already said. And what did he already say? There's a time coming when men will hide themselves. They'll hide themselves and ask things to fall on them to end their misery. I looked at that term. And it says they, they will cry out to the rocks of fallen us and hide us. Hide us. That is a term that was utilized for a person who desired 
that their, that their spirit be taken from the body. In other words, they want to die. But that's no escape. That means they don't know what they're talking about. Also, Jesus said that the world would know nothing until the flood came and took them. He said they knew nothing comparing it to the days of Noah. He said his coming is going to be like the days of Noah. But then he said they were buying and selling, marrying, giving into marriage until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, which means they're going to prepare for the wrong thing. Many people may be looking for natural disaster. That's not going to consume the majority of the lives. Many people don't know about the 36-hour movement orders that will be forced. They could tell an entire state to evacuate, and that whole state would have a forced evacuation. Then what? Everything you have, you'll have to leave behind. So one of the keys is, do not become attached to your physical things. To be ready to move when the Lord says, for you to move. Don't walk around fearing and saying, oh, I'm not ready because I can't buy this and can't buy that. You're going to be accountable to utilize everything that you have on hand. So if you don't have anything, hardly anything is going to be required of you. The Bible says much no, much required. That's also an extension to that principle that if the Lord gave you an ability to do something, it's going to be up to you to do it. We know this because some of us can repair things. We can, we can do a little bit of just about everything. And guess what? It is required of us to do a little bit of just about everything. The average person can sit down and nothing breaks in their homes. You let somebody be in there who can tinker with cars, tinker with electronics, tinker with the structures of houses. Watch how many things go wrong that need their attention. It never fails. If you know how to sew, you're going to have clothing that rips. Never fails. Why? Because whatever you have, you have to be a good steward over. If you're a good steward over, you know how to utilize it. What you don't have, somebody else is making preparations for you. And if it's not meant for you to live through those days, you're not going to live through those days no matter what you do. That means you won't control this one. The Father does. You will not control your outcome. But there has been a consistent outcome to all of these happenings in the earth. That is surely spiritual. Tornadoes, good example. They go to one house, skip three more, go to another. Floods, another example. There are a lot of people who were in the Bahamas. You know, last year, they were nervous about living in the Bahamas. I know you guys saw the articles. They had gotten a little bit on edge. Now listen to this, because somebody kept saying something about the Bahamas, and the Christians caused those who live in the Bahamas to be nervous until it hit the point a lot of people came out over the internet saying, oh, these Christians are just warning everybody about the Bahamas and something hitting it and them being taken over by water. They should just go back to a corner. But look what happened this year. It wasn't a comet. It was Dorian. No, isn't that something? A water event still took place. The Christians still warned about it. But they didn't want to hear it. You had some inside the body of Christ, a lot inside the body of Christ that came out and said, stop fear mongering. Just stay where you are. The Lord won't allow anything to happen to you. That's what they said. Look what happened. Look at the injuries. Look at the homes lost. Look at the business lost. Puerto Rico, the same thing. Right before the, that, that happened to Puerto Rico, there were some folks who were, kept saying something is going to happen in Puerto Rico. You know what they came out and said? Oh, they're fear-mongering again. Everybody just stay put, nothing's going to happen. They're always talking like that. And it was not, again, it was not a meteor. It was another hurricane. And then those in the Bahamas saw what happened to Puerto Rico, and you don't think they didn't do anything. So what does it tell you? It means this, what I'm going to tell you right now. If people aren't ready right now today, they're not going to be ready. They certainly won't hear the warnings. But if all those people in Puerto Rico would have adhered to the warnings God gave them, they wouldn't have been there when the storm struck. If those, if people would have listened to the warning God gave them about the Bahamas, they wouldn't have been there when it struck. It would have been somewhere else. Even the government tried to force evacuations and you had people fighting against it. They almost lost their lives. More things will happen just like that. But the point is, if you cannot hear from the Lord, it doesn't matter what you prepare for. You're going to deceive yourselves. Make sure that the Lord is instructing you because if you do it yourselves, you could be in an area where you need one item and not the other. You don't want to be in that predicament. I've been in one of those predicaments. I was so mad at myself, I couldn't even believe it. I went to a place and I was there for six months. I had prepared for one thing when it turned out to be another. And do you not understand how much of an idiot you feel? But not only that, when you cannot, when you didn't prepare for yourself, you can't help anybody else out either.
And the only reason I didn't prepare the right way is because I was arrogant in that respect. Don't become arrogant thinking that there's only one way to prepare. I'm telling you right now, it's based upon the incident. What about magma? What are you going to do if lava flows right down your neighborhood? You're not going to stay in your homes. You better get gone. What do you do if Yellowstone finally erupts? What do you do if Tamamas blows its top? What do you do then? All your supplies are not going to do you any good because what you're going to need is oxygen. Then what? Let me show you how people think. If you were to go through a bad happening and you're in the desert, what is one critical thing you need? I bet you a lot of people would say water. That's kind of obvious, isn't it? But it's not the right answer. You know what you need? You need a method of extracting water. You don't need the water, the bottled water to bring with you. You need a method of extracting water because below every single desert, there's tons of water, drinkable water. But if you don't know how to extract it, that's when you're done. Because if you had bottled water, if you carried a thousand pounds of bottled water, it's going to run out. You can carry a thousand pounds of food, it's going to run out. If you don't know how to replenish things, you're done for. So that means if you were to ever go in the desert instead of having all these the perishable items with you, you need the tools and techniques necessary to mine for water and to eat. You see how we think a lot of people actually believe, oh, we're going to have to have water. And do you have you tested the water yourself, the bottle of water yourself? Most people have not because you would find out that it's uh, filtered tap water. Same chemicals that are in tap water are in that bottle of water. They just took the flavor out because they put a, they put a, uh, what is it called? Somebody help me out, it's a nullifier for taste buds that they put in the water so you cannot taste what's in the water. There are tablets that exist that take all the taste out of water. Some of the guys put those tablets in, in tap water. One tiny little tablet the size of a nitrate tablet in a gallon of water and you could not smell the water and you could not taste anything in the water but it was tap water. It did not filter the water, did not take out the, the dangerous things. All it did was mask the taste of it. That's it. If you can mask the taste of something, you have effectively caused it not to smell. It was not healthier for anybody. Remember the company last year? Yet another one got busted. They were selling bottled water, but it turned out to be tap water. Remember the year before, same thing happened. Remember two years before that, same thing happened. Not that many people test the water. And if you don't test the water, you're taking somebody's word for it. But here's the downside to that. Do you not know your body's made to have living water? Not water stripped out of everything. There are no bonding agents in there, no bacteria in there, no amoebas in there that your body absolutely needs. No wonder in the Bible it says, the prophet's going to have no answer for what's happening. The wise men will have no answer. Nobody's going to have an answer. Oh, and by the way, what we see now in the world is a prelude to the spiritual troubles we're going to have. Everything is echoing the spiritual problems we're going to have. You see, what's been unseen for all these years is finally going to be seen. And when people see it, they're not going to know how to react. Or I should say, when people see them, they won't know how to react. And they won't know who is who. See, the Bible is clear on that. We don't know who is who. You cannot discern that one. Be careful to entertain strangers, thereby you have entertained angels unaware. Well, if you had discernment, you wouldn't have to be careful. And that would never be in the Word of God, would it? That would never be in the Word of God. If you had discernment to tell instantly who is who in this world, that would not be in the Word of God. But that's not the case. If in, a, in another day, some dark ones begin to fall doing what they are promised they can do in the last days, many people right now will be caught off guard. Let me explain to you how. We prepare for disasters, but are we prepared spiritually? For example, right now, if there's anybody in your life that you hold something against, if the Lord should come right now, right? Right now at this moment, you would not go with him. What a shame that would be. These things we're going to find out, and we're going to find out about ourselves. Again, speaking about the dangers in this world, to prepare depends upon what incident you're going to be exposed to. All of them will be different, and it's going to be different based upon the individual. So, you have to obey the Lord. Whatever the Lord has instructed you to do, that's what you do. If he told you to gather bubblegum, then go gather bubblegum. If he told you not to gather anything, don't do anything. Can you imagine if you told somebody not to gather anything, right? So they gather everything. Right before the drama hits, they have a heart attack and they're gone. They're gone to be with the Lord. 
Well, then you'll find out why he told them not to gather anything. What if he were going to use you as an example of his love to everybody else? For example, you weren't given the knowledge to prepare. Yet people in the middle of a trouble, people see that you're taken care of. And then by people taking care of you, by you being taken care of, you inspire them to trust in the Lord even more. All of a sudden, people are praising the Lord because of you. Because you were supernaturally cared for in front of thousands of people. They magnify the name of Christ and trust in his name because you obeyed. You did not know what was going to unfold. You simply obeyed. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Here's a question. Can you hear, are you willing to follow instructions from the Lord today? Because never think somehow you're going to, see, you shouldn't be thinking about saving your own life anyway. Those who seek to save their lives are going to lose it. Is your life in the Father's hands or not? Because during a calamity, unless you have been seasoned by multiple calamities, you don't even know how you're going to respond. But the Lord does. He will take care of you. If it's one of those uh, predefined things that happen in pretty big scale, problem, you can be forced out of your homes. Which is why I told everybody, make sure they have their personal documents ready to go. You guys ever get your license renewed, but you don't have the verification paperwork for it, and you have to go home and dig for it. But you knew you were going to renew your license because you knew that when you were issued the license. But you put the preparations for the renewal of the license off until the last moment. How many of us do that? If we handle our responsibilities at the last moment, I can assure you, we're going to prepare the same way. At the last moment, to obey is the key. And to do so with joy. To obey with joy means you understand. That's what it means. There are thousands of scenarios, guys. Thousands. And that's why you have to hear what the Lord is saying to you, the individual. Listen, he's not going to abandon you. You're not going to be left hung out to dry. And if you make a mistake, you're still not going to be left hung out to dry. He will care for you. He will provide for you. If you're pulled away, if you're pulled away from a place of familiarity, you're in the desert. And in the desert, he will feed you supernaturally. He'll watch over you supernaturally. But you have to be careful to listen to what the Lord is telling you to do. I have some, I have some good uh, colleagues they have bug out bags. If the Lord were to lay that up on my heart again, because he did it before, I would do it without hesitation. But I know the Lord has me preparing for the sakes of others. I know that some people will not prepare. And guess what? The Lord has instructed me to prepare for them. So it is with soberness we prepare. Because if you don't, you get into the conditions of, uh, you get into small debates. Well, we're going to need it. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. Well, the Lord will provide. Yeah, but he gave you that to provide for yourself and all these different arguments. So it's best to obey the Lord. Now, here's one of the keys. How many of you have received instruction from the Lord in the last 48 hours? And how many of you, in all honesty, you know the prophecies are going to come to pass before the life of you. You find yourself not preparing for them. Almost like something is clouding your mind when it comes to preparations. Almost like you don't trust preparing, or you don't want to prepare. But you certainly do know that revelation is going to unfold. Isn't that a strange position to be in? Again, the Lord knows with the outcome, what, what the future brings, we don't. So to obey Him is to be properly prepared. Some people will deal with ash. Some people will deal with uh, uh, lava. Some with pyroclastic flows. Some with dangerous air. Some with dangerous water. You don't know what area you're going to be in. You just don't know. In the East Coast, should should the East Coast be attacked? Can you imagine how many people would, would blow a gasket? Because they never thought that could ever happen. That would be bad. Nevertheless, that's precisely what the Bible says. So back to obeying. Here's a question in preparations. What has the Lord given you to prepare for? Not mankind, the Lord. Because whatever it is, you had best prepare. I hope that you guys prepare based on what the Lord has given you. Some of you provide services for other folks to prepare. Good for you. Some people get in the middle of a, 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 of a problem. And you know what they end up saying? I wish I would have just taken that canteen with me that's full of water. But I left it and I should have taken it with me. Or you may see somebody thirsty and you may say, I wish I would have listened to that unction to take it with me. Again, it's based on what we're going to face. I believe we're going to face a lot of water and fire. 
a tsunami, water and fire. Sickness preparations uh, want another consideration. What if some sort of biocontaminant has been spread? You can't touch anybody. You can't come within eight feet of anybody. You know, when you're talking within the limits of eight feet, you're spitting in each other's mouths. So you can easily contaminate somebody if they're eight feet. What about those preparations? Soberly, folks, we have to look at this. It's important to hear the Lord in these things. Lots of fire will be everywhere. Everywhere, which will bring the heat up even more on this planet. But are you guys ready? Are you ready to obey the Lord even more? I hope so. All this other stuff like uh, collecting. You know, I used to hear people say, well, collect gold and silver. That's exactly what the Bible says they're going to toss into the streets. Because it's not going to save them. It's not going to do any good for them. Not to mention, if I were an evil guy and I needed those minerals from off the face of the earth for more and more electronic devices, I would have civilians gather it for me. How would you do that? Advertising special deals and scenarios so people would go out and collect metals so that when I need them, I know exactly where to extract them from. But people are doing that anyway because we have become quite arrogant in most things we do. Folks, again, with preparations, it's important that your number one preparatory action is to be able to hear from the Lord. Some of you now know how fast and furious these troubles can come upon you. And if you have an inability to hear or you just simply don't want to hear, well, that's when things go wrong. You guys who have been in trouble spots before where it looked real hopeless, it's good to communicate that number one, those situations can startle and scare you. No matter who you are, if you've not been seasoned by them, they can scare you. But in every single outcome, you're going to find deliverance. And one of the keys here, the reason why is the true preparation is being able to hear from the Lord is because he's the only one that knows what direction you really need to go in. We don't know. Some folks have been pinned down in firefights. It's, you can't tell what direction to go into if that starts. And if you've, if you've ever been in a firefight, you realize the fog, that confusion of combat is extremely real. But if you can hear from the Lord, he will guide you every single step of the way. So right now would be a good place to start to hear from the Lord, to learn to follow his lead, not your own lead. That's where people mess up. If you follow yourself based upon what scenario, if you've not gone through anything, and sometimes if you've gone through something, each situation is going to be uniquely different, which means you don't know what the true circumstances are. We can speculate all day, but the key is, is to be able to hear from the Lord and to obey the Lord. Because if you can't do that, you're lost. Now, point number two, why in the world would anybody try? Now, this is going to sound strange, but I want to hear your answers. Why would anybody try to survive a situation? What motivates a person to prep, to prepare for these things anyway? I'll tell you this, by way of flesh, most people begin to prepare. I did that too a long time ago, but I will never do that again. And I found out I never have to. All I have to do is obey. See, because you don't know what role you may end up playing in a disaster. You don't know. What if it is the will of God for you not to live through a situation? Are you okay with that? What if it's so what if the, if it's the Lord will that you're going to make it through a situation if that is the case you can literally be out there with nothing and if the Lord decrees you're going to live through it there's nothing that can take you out of this world you should have that peace because a lot of people get nervous they'll say well I can't I don't know if I'm going to be able to save my life and that's what scares them because they're frightened of dying and that often happens Right when you see a trouble, a massive trouble, you become fearful to die. After you've gone through a few of them, after you grow spiritually, you realize something. Life and death is in our Lord's hands. And if he did not decide it's time for you to go, there's no situation on this earth that can take you out. We have to be mindful of those things. Because if not, you're just going to be another person trying to save their own lives. And the Bible says you're going to lose it if you do that. So the key is to be able to hear from the Lord. Now, to be able to hear from the Lord requires what? Obedience and faith in the Lord. With those two things, a trust is built. 
And then you don't worry about saving your own life. You worry about other folks, even during a time of crisis. You end up witnessing the people and doing all sorts of things. Why? Because you're no longer consumed by fear. So how would you get a person fortified against fear within these natural disasters? Within a disaster anyway, how would you get a person seasoned where they would not fear? The way the Lord does. He takes you through small moments of crises to build you up so that you can operate and function in one of those times so that you will not resist the Holy Spirit. Rather, you will open yourself up for God's guidance within yourselves. What does the psalm say? He will lead you beside the still waters. He will restore your soul. That's powerful. And if God will lead you beside the still waters, he's going to take you away from that, from that confusion and that noise and everything else. He will do it. He'll do it every single time. But if you're so taken by fear, you're going to imagine these worst case scenarios that are just simply not true. You guys remember when they were preparing for DHS to come and take everybody's weapons? They used to get mad at me because I tell them, don't worry about DHS. Don't worry about them taking weapons. They're not coming to do that. You know, I got chewed out by people when I said that until time kept going on and everything leveled out. On the opposite side of that argument are where the phenomena is getting worse and worse. People are prepared for spiritual assaults, which means girded up with all things of the Word of God, having the full armor on, and we can't go through life making up. You know, all these scenarios can make you nervous, but don't be nervous. How many of you are nervous about, when you, when you see a trouble in the world, how many people are nervous about that? How many people get nervous that you may lose everything? Anybody ever have that thought? Well, I may lose everything. You only lose everything if you try to hold on to everything. We know that people will not be prepared, which means they have conditioned themselves for a few things. And people have tried this throughout the years and it didn't work so well. Let your motive be the right motive. You'll not go wrong. True preparation? Spiritual preparation again. Because you don't know what's going to unfold. But the Lord does. Because He is the one that will unfold it. And if you are in the middle of it, it's not for you to be destroyed. It's for your victory. For your full deliverance. All of us ought to be thankful for that. Then the curtain comes down. The veil, the full veil, comes down. But we will have episodes when people become quite fearful over what they see. Try not to become fearful, but rather understand that all things are under the guiding hand of our Lord. And because you are his child, he's not going to see you perish. He said not one ha hair of your head would perish. That's what the Lord said. So why would anybody become fearful? If the Lord said not one hair on your head would perish, meaning you're not going to be eternally lost. Many people want to go home and be with the Lord, but when it comes to death, they're frightened of it. They don't want that transition, period, because they're frightened of death. Those who came out of tribulation, they probably died. We have to be able to hear from the Lord. If you can hear him now, it'll be okay. If you cannot hear from him now, that's when you have to stop fighting your trials and tribulations and actually go through them because the spiritual problems are going to far outweigh these natural problems that we have and we're all going to see it we're going to see more and more pieces of it unfold which will solidify it but one last time what is the proper way to prepare to make sure that you can what hear from the lord what can stop you from hearing from the lord anybody know that's when you are speaking louder than he is. Do you guys have that one? Because I should be quite clear with all of us. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Spiritually, spiritually, people are wherever you are today. If you're compromised spiritually today, God's grace is sufficient. But you ought to take that seriously. This is a transition phase. We ought to take that seriously. Make sure that you're hearing from the Lord in view of your brothers and your sisters that all benefit from what the Lord gives you or me in this case. So now that we know that, now that we know that uh, what type of preparation depends upon the incident you will be a part of. And that incident is known by the Lord our God, not by man. They will prepare for one thing and something else will get them. That's what the Bible says. You escape the torment outside, put your hand on your wall and you get bit by a viper. Meaning, there's no escape, and it's always about obedience. 
The Lord will preserve you for the sake of somebody else, but he does not preserve us so that we can be paraded among men. He didn't do that. You guys uh, get all that? I hope so. Preparations are a difficult subject to talk about, but remember, there are lots of different things you may have to prepare for, right? And if you bring food and water, possibly that's not what's needed. Maybe you go to a place that's full of food and water, but you needed something else. I've seen people who were prepared by way of food and water, but I saw a person leave one item and it crippled them. Do you know what that is? Toenail clippers. They didn't bring them with them. They had an infection from a ripped toenail, which caused trench foot in the long term, allowing infection to settle into their bodies. And they had a pretty rough time for the next six months. Who would think to bring that? Small things. But if you listen to the Lord, he'll guide you every step of the way. So let's not be critical of each other based on how we prepare, but make sure we ourselves are listening and obeying the voice of the Lord regarding preparation, especially those of you with families, because it's not just about you. It's about everybody in your household. Certain scenarios, when they unfold again, you're going to have, I'll say, a max of 30 hours in your homes. That's it. You're going to have to leave them possibly forever. That's something a lot of people don't want to face. That little small fact there. All right, guys. Remember, we go forward with great sobriety. Not with the imaginary stuff, but with full sobriety. God bless you guys.